What's good everybody, it's Batman and uh, we're going to be doing another Naruto reaction today. Uh, we're going to be checking out our boy TG and um, he actually did a topic that I was going to do originally for part one because I'm mainly focusing part one first and then I'll eventually dive into Shippuden. Um, but uh, it was actually uh, pretty cool to think about and it was uh, Rock Lee versus the Sound 4 um, and so it's pretty, it's pretty interesting and he says not as close as it seems so I'm very curious to see what he dives in. Uh, what he thinks and dives into it now i'm gonna be honest personally if it's lee with like all the gates and stuff you know what i mean from like gate one and above i think lee me personally slams the sound four in a 1v1 status situation um that that's just me personally you know i'm just just being honest um but you know th that's kind of what you're working with now if it's lee if he's having like to fight all fucking four of them i will say he's gonna need to be at max power and go all out like at fifth gates and then he can be able to deal with them all still you know, and things like that, but, um, other than that, that's kind of what you're working with, and Drunken Lee obviously would slam them all, like, it's this blatant scaling to Kim Maru, and Kim Maru is obviously over at the Sound 4 and things like that, too, so, uh, but we're gonna check this out, it's about 23 minutes long, not too bad, one of, uh, TG's short videos, um, I do know he some, sometimes has some lengthy videos as well, which, nothing wrong with that, it's actually awesome, um, but, uh, this one's not too bad, so we'll check this one out, and, to be honest with you, I'm pretty sure we're gonna be more likely in a similar scaling, um, mindset of things and uh, we, we normally are so it's probably not going to be any really any contentions or anything if there is for any reason or anything to refute obviously i'll say something or if there's a disagreement i may have i'll say that but um let's get into it let's see what we go what's going on guys tg or thunder guys what's good tg pretty interesting video today we're talking about rock lee why because he stands on business and what if he started out with the sasuke retrieval squad instead of coming late how would he do against the sound four and how would this actually impact the story and like how the arc progressed like and subscribe or don't is what it is can't really say anything about it let's get into the video now the state of lee in this discussion isn't simply going to be oh he's the same as he was in the tuning exams no 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 no. this is the lee that's fresh out the hospital he's still got that little wrist wrap that you know they give you at the hospital that's like a little too difficult to take off y'all know what i'm talking about it essentially means that lee's not gonna be performing at it oh so that's the case and that means he can only use first gate or drunken fist okay so drunken fist obviously slams if it's first gate if it's in a 1v1 status lee lee would slam he would kill um uh what's it called he would basically kill them all um and that's kind of what you're working with like the only one you can make an argument um is maybe psycon if he's able to like somehow split his body apart before you know getting crushed on the ground but then again when lee wraps him up and you name it i don't know you know what i mean you get what i'm saying so but um if it's first if it's in a 1v1 setting i could see lee pulling it off because he has blatant scaling to kimamaru and things like that but um but if you know if it's all of them at once i, I then no he loses so his optimal cell because because when he when he comes out of the hospital he can only use the first gate he can't do anything else further than that and uh we do know as well that once you use the first gate at uh, least kind of cooked and gassed as well so he only has one you know uh one 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 move bro basically you know so kind of puts into perspective that maybe the fifth gate is outside his range. He kind of implies it when he's fighting Kimimaro. He's like, I just got a surgery, so I can't go too crazy. But he does think he can open at least one of the inner gates. So we can maybe talk about a couple different scenarios there. But just due to how strong Lee fundamentally was in the tuning exams and how the gates fundamentally operate as a multiplier, it does make it that... I don't want to say he's immune to, but he's able to stay relevant throughout the entirety of part one. At least when you compare him to the other getting in the group. I'll talk about a lot of this stuff that becomes relevant in discussion. Now, I want to talk about the sound four for a second. Because we're going to start with Jerobo, obviously. The thing, a lot of people don't quite grasp how fatigued and weakened the Sound 4 were in their encounter with the Genin. As their bodies were immobile and they were forced to go into Curse Mark Stage 2. Spit, TG, Rido, spit. They, Let them know. Let them know. <laughs> anime Profiles also backs this up by just saying they're fatigued. But Jirobo, due to him actually absorbing Chakra from the entirety of the group, could actually be argued to be the closest one to full power. Or his full power self. And he's objectively weaker than the rest still. I will say, like, Lee is the first one to stop. Instead of Choji, he's the one that I'm like, all right, I'm gonna fight Jirobo. Jirobo's speed is somewhat questionable. We know with Dotan, he was able to trap the entirety of the Sasuke retrieval squad, but the group really wasn't expecting this as Sakon and Ukon had put into like a play to separate and stop Shikamaru's shadow possession.
possession. So I don't know if I would say like this is the most objective speed feat, especially since Viewer Style more so like formed around their feet with like starting at Jerobo. So uh, it's a little tougher to say. We do see that when Jerobo attempts to chuck a giant boulder at the group, Choji is able to react and like form the human boulder and it does like press Jerobo a little bit. So you could actually make a case that this version of Jerobo and Choji, even though like following the fact Jerobo does kind of handle Choji, may not be that far off in terms of speed, at least when talking about base Jerobo. Choji's also able to perceive him and like take the green pill and like catch him before Jerobo actually tackles him in the group. And I want to make a note about the three pills Choji takes. They're never explicitly noted to like boost his stats or anything. They're just noted to grant him explosive power and certain abilities. So like how does basically stack up to green pill Jerobo? Well, it's kind of tough to say because we just don't know how fast Choji is like after all that training he's done in part one. If you want to look at how base Sasuke can at least contend with the sound four, all four, like jumping him at the same time. And how that Sasuke, at the very least, shouldn't be astronomically above the base Lee he was on the same level to in the tuning exams. Then that might put into perspective that this... Uh, I will not say the Sound 4 are at full power um, here at, as the scene is framed as I'm testing Sasuke more than anything else. But comparing this to the weakened cells, it's a, pr a, pr a pretty decent showing. So the only issue I have with this particular scene is exactly what TG says. They're mainly just testing Sasuke and they're kind of feeling they're not going fully all out. If they did, they would have completely slaughtered him, which they literally do right after. When Saikun goes fully all out, he fucking slams Sasuke. So, because um, again, they're joining level of power, which, the, you know, Sasuke at this point in time, they're, they're not, uh, he's not at that level. So my, my, the only issue I have with this is comparing this to the, Cho to the Jorobo that Choji fights it's not really a way to gauge Choji's power in, in comparison. If anything, I'd say the best way to kind of gauge Choji um, is that he's at least relative um, to to, uh, to Naruto and, and to like Kiba because like in the anime, it shows additional feats and whatnot. And in the manga, it shows it in a sense as well. But, you know, he, he's able to react and fight against Jirobo. Same thing with him. But literally, uh, you know, so when it comes to that in comparison, like that's like Choji and base, then you give him the pills, which he's obviously getting stronger and things like that. Now with the pills, it's not going to be like a massive amp because we literally see when the, when the sound four use like their amps, like the CM1 or CM2, that the Gending are still able to fight him to some regard, at least, at least for Neji, you know what I mean? Um, you know, things like that. Uh, Naruto is another example too. Um, and then in Shikamaru, he's another example as well. The only one that just got blatantly overscaled was Kiba to Saikon. Um, you know, but and then Choji, he was like a back and forth momentum with Jirobo, right? So, so like, you know, they're not like massive amps or anything like that either. So, overall, basically, where I'm getting at, you know, is uh, Choji's in like a similar ballpark when it comes to, to Naruto, Naruto and Kiba. Um, and, and, that, and that's, that's really all you can really gauge. Like once he gets to like, to, to like, once he gets to like red pill, I think that's when he does surpass Kiba in base Naruto. Um, you know what I mean? And he's contending with CM2 Jirobo. Um, and with like the closest we see with Naruto, like he's over here struggling with base Saikon, his hand immediately gets grabbed and tries to do the rising on, you know, uh, the, uh, Taiyu was able to, to, to punch him in the face and they try to have a, an exchange at each other. Um, Jirobo is also like beating him up in the, in the anime as well, things like that. So that's kind of what you're working with in a general sense, you know. So overall, you know, what I mean, like when it comes to when it comes to yellow pill Choji and and uh, and and red pill Choji, that's where I think he starts to surpass Naruto and Kiba, basically. You know, and that's kind of what you're working with, because um, like we see Choji and base fighting against Jirobo, but it's not enough. He's getting beaten up. Then he does like the first pill, which is the green one, and Jorobo is still like, you know, um, Jorobo is dealing with him to, to a certain regard, but then he goes CM1, and then basically uh, now he's able to, to shit on Choji, and then Choji has to go to the yellow pill, okay, um, which then, you know, allows him to do like that. So with now they're basically equal, you know what I mean, CM1 Jorobo to him, but then when he expands his body like massively, then Jorobo has to go to a CM2, so... Choji has to basically apply three fucking amps, okay? The the fucking green pill, then the yellow pill, and then to expand his body and make it even more massive, which is a third amp. See what I'm getting at? So once once Choji's kind of getting to like that second and third amp type level, you know, of power, that's where you could say he's like surpassing even base Naruto and things like that. Um, you know, and obviously Red Pill Choji would, would be blatantly over too. 
And that's kind of what you work with, you know? That, I think that's the best way, in my opinion, to analyze it because it's literally direct performances between the three, uh, between at least Naruto and, um, and Choji. And we obviously see Sasuke scaling in correlation to Naruto as well in the final valley and on the rooftop, so. Choji's probably not on that level. I would also add, though, if you go off Kimimaro's assessment on how Lee might not be as easy as the likes of Naruto and Shikamaru, this same Kimimaru who just got done slamming around QB Naruto, this would also boost the arguments for Lee. Kimimaro say this, too, is yep. pretty substantial because... Yep, that, that is true as well. Like, uh, Kimimaru, like, when he gets speed blitz by Lee, he's like, okay, he's not gonna, he's not as easy as the others in the manga. In the anime... Uh, my fault. I had to get my cat's bitch ass, bro. That motherfucker was trying to troll me. He literally comes out of nowhere, and literally like this for no reason. He looks dead in my eyes, and just smacks my PlayStation Five and makes it tilt over to the ground. I'm like, bitch. You know what I mean? I'm like, what the? F you know? Anyways, um, but, you know, like TG is spitting there though. Uh, what's it called? When it comes like Cuban art, so he fought whatever, and he still says that. So he's literally gauging and comparing. Lee to QB Naruto to all the other uh to Shikamaru as well and Tayuya. So that, that's a big deal. You know what I mean? Um that's pretty impressive. So basically Lee, Lee is no joke, bro. And mind you, this is a Lee that's weaker, less sharper, and less faster than when he was in the tuning exams. So like this isn't even Lee at his full potential. You know what I mean? Like Lee's no fucking joke, bro. People a lot of people sleep on Lee, you know what I mean? But anyways, um so all, all basically all I'm getting at is with everything he said so far lee would definitely be over jerobo he, he would you know what i mean um not like if it was weightless lee which is what we see against kimimaru like weightless lee in uh, anime and manga like he was on base kimimaru's level like they were going like you know blow for blow or just keeping up with each other in the anime he actually lands three blows on kimimaru and then kimimaru is able to understand like his fighting style and then he's able to win in the end and then that's when Lee does his drunken fist, you know, and then Lee just starts slamming him because he, because Lee basically has the same speed, but he's unpredictable now. So now he, now his fighting style is just way greater than Kimimaru, and he just starts beating the fuck out of him. It's, you know, a lot of people say it's like a stat boost or an amp or whatever. I don't think that's the case at all. Uh, Lee's stats basically stay the same. It's just that his fighting style is so unpredictable where he, he's just getting basically out outmatched in taijutsu you know and kim Mar even says it he's like that taijutsu is something else he's too uh he's too fast and unpredictable things like that whatever now you could argue maybe it's a stat boost whatever, and that's completely reasonable and fine um what's up I'm, I'm curious what tg would you say on that if he brings it up but overall i think the stats to stay the same it's just his taijutsu just gets way better you know and he just outperforms kim Maru. and then basically at that point you know, that's why Kim Mar had to do partial CM, uh, uh, CM1 transformation in order to finally be able to be equal, um, you know, uh, and or not even equal, but to basically stop uh, Drunken Lee's and just outspeed him and speed blitz him. And then when Lee does the first gate, he has to do it again. And then he set, then once he does the first gate, he's like impressive speed, but it ends here. And mind you, he never says that about QB Naruto either, you know, so... First gate is very fucking powerful. It's it's very underrated. People really sleep on Lee. I'm telling you, bro. Um, but yeah, so I just want to kind of put that out there. But um, Lee's no joke. So I do think like Lee would be beating the fuck out of Jirobo because he's just he's just more greater than than Naruto and Shikamaru and Choji, even Sasuke. Like when it comes to speed and fighting and Taijutsu, he's just that guy, bro. Like he's no fucking joke. <laughs> so same dude who was really slapping away shikamaru and naruto before they could even really perceive him he's just an animal uh you could also maybe say lee got stronger post-surgery somehow although gara directly contradicts this so we just should yep. be careful about what we draw off of from the kimimaru fight because if you look at uh like the lee that fights kimimaru before he sips his medicine Kimimaro takes no offensive approach. He's literally just dodging Lee. There's not one panel where he actually throws an offensive strike. Lee also directly noting that he just can't land a single strike or kick on Kimimaru. So it's just like basically wasn't even performing that crazy against Kimimaru regardless. So, you know, while I think you could make a case he's relevant. In the anime, he lands three hits. He does. Because the way it goes in the anime, uh, they fight, whatever. He lands three hits on him. And then they continue to fight, and and, it, and everything else is the same. Exactly what he's shown in the manga. Um, so, I'm just saying, you know what I mean? Um, and so, basically, Kim Mara's on defense, and trying to, you know, like, he's trying to basically move and then hit him, but he couldn't. And then, basically, Lee is able to to beat his ass. Like, 
I'll show it on um so the first blow he lands is when uh, he's about to kill Nard. So a lot, some people like to be like, oh, off guard or ball. But it doesn't matter because there's plenty of characters that have reacted to off guard attacks or on guard attacks or attacks from behind all the fucking time. And at the end of the day, he was able to hit him still. So bottom line is, Lee, Lee does scale to Kimaru. Otherwise, he wouldn't be able to hit him like that. Um, what's called. And then we see uh, when they're having their Taijutsu exchanges, he's able to land a kick on his shoulder. And then when they're fighting again and they're going at it, What's it called? They're fighting. He does like, uh, so it's actually four hits. My bad. Yeah, one, two, three, and then four when he uppercuts him. So, yeah. So he hits him multiple times. And then what we see in the manga is what's shown as well. And then that's when we get the statement where, you know, whatever, blah, blah, you name it. You know, and that's when Kim Mar is able to read him and finally do good. We're not going to sit here and just say, like, he's above QB Naruto or anything like that. There's a lot to this. There's a lot to this to kind of, like, ascertain exactly where lee is like in comparison but i will say choji just has not demonstrated like the feats of lee even in this fight so i wouldn't necessarily make the leap to say he's stronger and like lee has more impressive showing slash statement yeah, i will say this i i'll say this uh for the the lee that that fights kimar whatever you name it and and how he's performing along with joker fist and even the first gate i i like again i think lee is just that's just how really fucking strong he is if, you know, if it's a full power Lee, I, I would, I don't see any issue arguing that he actually would be above QB Naruto. Um, again, if you analyze all like all the feats with Final Valley, QB Naruto, you know, whatnot. And then compare that to correlation to base Naruto, so on and so whatever. With Kim Mar, you name it, you, you could just connect all the dots and there you go. And so, and then with the Lee, that's not at full power and it's just like weaker. Because like what TG mentioned with the guard statement, basically like, you know, you again you could argue whatever it teach kind of explain in a general consensus you know depending on what angle and the perception and it's not really like he says it's either vague or like it's not really that clear you can go but with with all the feats right if we analyze the feats alone and statements with that evidence it would technically put weightless lee above qb Nards. it would by performance and feats and statements it would especially a, a first gate as well so you know, it is what it is. You know, a lot of people think that's it's pretty crazy to hear, but it makes sense in a way, you know, because, like, we know, like, Sasuke back in the tuning exams, he was at least, like, relative, you know what I mean, to Weightless Lee. Like, he wasn't there, but he was almost, you know, there. Um, and then, like, you know, we know some time goes by and they train or whatever, um, but obviously with that time period of them training, whatever, it wasn't anything massive or insane because they're still in a similar ballpark, you know what I mean? And we that's further confirmed when we get to the retrieval arc and things like that and what Lee's able to do and so on and so forth. So that the end of the day, like, you know, it is what it is. Personally, I, I do think Lee is above QB Naruto. Um, Cause again, he just has defeats. Like you could say QB Naruto is like at least relative in some sense to weightless Lee. Um, but Lee, Lee would just beat his ass. Like he, he would, he, he was, he's just faster. You know, Naruto with 2000 plus fucking clones, remind you, which also compensates for speed. We see that with Kakazu. Okay. He has all those clones to further amplify his speed as well, yet he still can't land any hits whatsoever. But then Lee shows up, anime fucking lands um, uh, four hits total, okay? And then, then he can't land any more hits on him once Kimar is able to read him at, as of that point, okay? And then Kimar wins, and in the manga only, it just skips to the point where they're, they're equal the whole time, but Lee just can't land any hits, and then uh, Kim Mar is able to, to read his, 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 you know, fighting style. And then he's about to kill him. And that's when he's like, wait, let me take my medicine and shit. You know, so at the end of the day, Lee just, he, Lee just does better. You know, it's it sounds crazy, but Lee does better than QB Naruto, you know. And that was a mentally amp QB Naruto too, you know. So. It's to him. So. I'll go with the idea that Lee and Choji just really aren't that far off. We then run into a bunch of issues for base Lee versus Jirobo in the fact that Jirobo actually may be too durable for Lee to just blow through. Like, he's able to make doton barriers, like, defensively and whatnot, so it's like, it kind of depends on, like, the speed gap there. The reason base Lee isn't as relevant either in this situation is that he actually has to take his medicine very soon after he arrives like or is on the battlefield so if you kind of go off that drunken lee has to make an appearance now drunken lee is obviously very unorthodox it's gonna be very hard to predict this is the same guy that was kind of handling kimimaro a bit due to the unorthodox nature of the drunken fist i will yeah, also I'll say this kimimaro is way over the sound for it's blatantly implied with the verbatim statements and all on top of it with the feats as well 
that we see. Like, again, the Sound Force struggling with all the other gaining and whatnot, you know, which includes base Naruto, you name it, etc. And, like, you know what I mean? So, like, and then we see QB Naruto is obviously way stronger, whatever you name it, fighting against Kim Maru, all that stuff, whatever. Coraletta, all it's a Lee, you name it, etc. Lee would just, he'd just beat the fuck out of Jerobo. Like, I just, I don't know what to tell you, bro. Um, that, that's just me personally, especially at least with the first gate. If you don't think Weightless Lee can do it, at least with the first gate, bro, he could definitely be able to, to one-shot Jerobo. And that's just me personally. Um, but yeah, you know, so that's, that's all I'm getting at. Uh, and that's just, again, that's based upon feats and the statements. Like, even the Spider-Man guy, who's, in my opinion, I think is the strongest out of the entire Sound 4, he, even he says, like, nobody's ever pushed me this far except for Kim Maru. You know what I mean? Praising Kim Maru to just be on a whole other level. You know, and then we see it with Taiya when he threatens and says, I'm not going to kill you. The only reason why I'm not going to kill you is because, you know, I want you to fulfill the mission, whatever, blah, blah. So, again, I just feel like there's way more evidence to blatantly show. We even see, like, him, like, to be with a perception, like, be blitzed here above, base Naruto and Shikamaru too. I feel like the gap with Kim Maru to Sound 4 is just way beyond. So, and then you correspond that with Lee. I don't, I don't know what to tell you, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Kim Maru needed partial CM1 transformation in order to stop Lee, you know? With the first gate, you know. So if you don't want to at least grant weightless Lee, you know, even though in my opinion he has defeats to be on Kimara's level as well, to be on base, you know, and then it took for uh, it took for him to have an unpredictable fighting style with you know by tr getting drunk in order to make him use the curse mark again. Like there you go, right? But that that's all I'll say. That the drunken fist does seem to give Lee some sort of like stat boost. The anime actually adds the whole okay. Bit so he does think it gives a stat boost, which again it's understandable and it's fair. But um, me, I don't, I don't think anything personally changes. It, it, like it's basically the same because when we lit, like if you literally compare base weightless Lee to Kim Mar, like they're going at it, whatever, same flow, whatever you name it. Then we do drunken Lee. It's the same thing. They're going at it, like they're going blow for blow over and over and over. But then Lee's just landing, like he's landing all the hits while. Uh, Kim Maru can't land any hits, you know what I mean? So, you know, and again, like, he, even the scan Tiji's providing, he says that Taiji to something else, I can't read his moves, and he also says, like, he's too fast, you know? So. About Guy and Neji needing to restrain Lee, where Guy talks about, like, the drunken fist and how one gets stronger the more drinks they have and the more drunk the individual is, and Lee was able to perform the feat of having Guy and Neji restrain him after just getting one sip in. This also gets more crazy when you look at Neji's form in the flashback and that he's going, he's attempting. Oh, the Cox thing? No, 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 no. Another trump card after remembering Guy, and it's an alcoholic treat given to him by Guy. And after using this, he completely dominates the person he was fighting, somewhat comparing a drunken amp to a gate level increase. Now, I'm not saying Lee gets 10 times stronger from sipping Patron, but I do think it is interesting to note that Lee does seem to be physically stronger, again, for some reason after getting a sip in. So it, it does seem to be a sub, on some level like an unorthodox plus stat boost. Kimimaru also notes like the speed increase as well. So that is something to consider here. And listen, if Kimimaru's not predicting this or also noting the speed, Jirobo's just absolutely getting handled. There's not really any discussion to be had in that case. It's actually so prevalent that it forces Kimimaro to use state is like his first stage of the curse mark. So Drunken Lee just actually may overwhelm like base to curse mark stage one Jirobo. But the issue is again, like once Jirobo goes stage two, he actually might just be too durable for Lee to take down. And we see this as when Choji like expands into like the mountain sized Choji. Jirobo's just holding him up with one fist. The speed of Choji's expansion is also very impressive. It's noted to be very fast. Some translations of the data book actually say it's like lightning speed. Take that as you will. I just think it is interesting to note. So you could make a case that again, he might be able to just like before Lee like initiates the front Lotus, Jirobo would undergo his version two transformation. Cause Lee at this point arguably can't even use like the fifth gate. Uh, and again, right? It's a bit questionable, even if he did enter like more like beyond the first gate, if he would really be able to overcome that durability from Jirobo. As literally Choji goes to like a hundred times multiplier to be able to one shot him. And I know what people are also gonna say and bring up the fact that Jirobo and the curse mark is like a ten times multiplier in the gates you know, multiply Lee's strength by dozens of times, so it'll be better. I am super opposed to the idea that the curse mark stage two is just a straight up 10 times multiplier. It's never explicitly stated. It's just stated to increase the chakra supply 10 times uh, or like 10 times the power. So Drobo states it increases his power 10 times. 
uh, Sakon and Ukon like stay all oh, my chakras like 10 times greater and obviously chakra control is what matters Just having more chakra doesn't make you stronger The only time this is really evident is when somebody undergoes like a ten tails transformation and there's like an immediate speed amp But no, this is like the whole reason like Bijou and Jujuriki like exist and why one stated to be stronger than the other And if you actually look at the sound for data books all of them list the version 2 so I, I do agree with, uh, with that as well with what TG is saying, um, and, and it makes sense because like if you when you even analyze Sasuke in the final valley when he's applying the curse mark amps whatever he should just be able to be able to be blatantly above Naruto but he's still not. So again, chakra control is extremely fucking important. And then when we even see him in Shippuden, like I'm not saying heavy Sasuke's chakra control is dog shit. But it's still not incredible because even when he's fighting against like Datara, you know, um, you know, and other people whatsoever, uh, especially Datara, someone that he doesn't give a fuck about killing, and because it's in association with Itachi, like he couldn't blitz Datara or anything twice, you know. And you would think you would just go to CM one or CM two and then blitz Datara, right? But yet he doesn't. So it's like it's more along the lines where is it really, really like an insane big fucking amp? You know what I mean? So on and so forth, like. It can be if your chakra control is probably really great, right? You know, um, but if not, and it's like average or below average, you know, or it's not really that cracked yet, it's not going to do basically justice against the opponent that you're doing, right? To where it can make you like blitz tiers above now. So I, I do understand what TG is saying there. That's a good point. As for everything else he said overall, it's, you know, it's fair. I get it. I just personally, I think that Lee, based upon the whole Kim Maru scaling in him and connection to where it's his base and drunken as well. And, and especially the first gate, at least the first gate, bro. Definitely the first gate. He should be over Jirobo. Like to say Jirobo CM2 could be able to, you know, be on Kim Maru's level or, or over, you know what I mean? Or... You know, like, I just don't see that. You know, I think he's way below Kimaru. And, and if Lee is on that level, he should just be a way above him and be able to surpass his durability and have enough AP. It's basically where I'm getting at. You know what I mean? If the scaling is within the same ballpark, he should be above. And that's just kind of what I'm saying. Because basically with that logic, that means even Kimaru wouldn't be able to hurt Jirobo. And I don't think that would be the case, you know? So, but that's, that's just me. I, I get what he's saying, but I don't know. I just don't, you know, so specific parts of each of the sound force arsenal so for example for jirobo since his transformation drastically increases his destructive power any attack used in level two is strong enough to finish the foe for kidumaro it's noted that in level two it gives him unmatched precision for sakon ukon they gain the ability to use a specific technique that they can only use in version two with the power of their chakra they're able to disassemble his body down to a cellular and even protonic level this is also the same with two years flute genjutsu that she can use in version two so it's just not like supported that it's just strictly 10 times i'm also not saying they don't get faster because everybody who uses the curse mark is noted to get a speed increase i'm just saying like version 2 is in a strict 10 times it's also noted that with like the curse seals uh the heaven and earth they hold exceptional power although their actual effects and potency are not directly evident anime profiles also backs this up with stating that the curse marks just increase chakra and certain abilities from the sound floor so it's just pretty explicit that it's not just a straight up 10 times multiplier so playing the multiplier game it, it just doesn't really work in this discussion so it's like, is Lee really going to bust out something beyond Choji's like 100 times butterfly punch and just one shot Jirobo? It doesn't seem likely. So you kind of have to argue that Lee uses the forward Lotus or like the drunken fist and overwhelms Jirobo. Uh, in his base or maybe curse mark stage one before he can get the chance to just like gain momentum via the higher stages of the curse mark but the end all be all is that due to lee's arsenal also damaging himself as even the first you know if it's an in-character fight it really is contingent and based upon how it how the fight is approached here you know, and things like that you know i do think uh lee and base would just be dog washing fucking jirobo you know what i mean it's like jirobo goes see him one still not enough then he'll have to go see him two and then maybe now lee would would uh whip out you know the first gate and just like one shot him whatever you know or maybe even use like the his medicine or type shit i don't fucking know but you know overall like you know that's kind of what now if it's bloodlusted and lee just straight up goes for the for the kill and goes first gate and that's it i i don't think jirobo has any time to react at all like i don't think he's gonna be able to transform he just gets Bam, kicked in the air, wrapped up, Lotus, right? And he's dead. You know what I mean? Like, that's just kind of what I, what I think it would be. That's just me personally. But in, in character, I could see how you could argue around that. And then if you think, like, he's just too durable to where Lee just can't hurt him, then sure. But I just, I don't see that with Jirobo. Like, the only two characters in Naruto that were blatantly emphasized to be really durable was, like, like people like Kimaru, The Bone, and Gara, right? You know?
So that's all I'm saying, man. I, I don't I don't see Jeroba really being as for like a durability. It, it, to me, that feat was more of just like a, a scaling feat, right? You know what I mean? He's just powerful enough to just deal deal with Choji's attack, you know. So meaning in correlation, as long as someone's either above Jeroba Jirob, uh, or in a similar regard, they could replicate the same feat, you know. But that's just me. Skate does this. It's just going to be very hard for him to take on the durability of Jerobo. So Lee can win. Although, again, I don't think it's as likely as some people may make it out to be. Not necessarily due to his speed edge, but just due to the nature of Lee's arsenal and how in a similar position to Gara, he may not just be able to, like, punch hard enough to beat Jerobo. Next up, we have Lee versus Kitomaru. Now, Kitomaru, uh, even fatigued, is just straight out or flat out said to be stronger than Jerobo, even with the group's charm. Oh, and that's another thing. A lot of people underestimate Lee's power, too. Like, Gar had to use a sand uh, substitution in order to, uh, in order to fucking, to not die by the Lotus. Otherwise, he would have been taken out right there and then. Like, Gar didn't just straight up take it. He had to, like, use a sand fucking uh, substitution and get the fuck out of there. You know what I mean? And the only reason why that happened was because how heavy Gar was, because of all the sand, to where Lee had to output a lot more force and AP to keep kicking him in the air and then Lee like grunted in pain and that opening allowed Gara to like immediately move and do you know what I mean because but the whole time while he was getting kicked in the air he couldn't do shit he would have just got Lotus you know so that's the only thing like if, the Lotus AP is really fucking strong even when he does it against Dozu you know and then Zaku saves him with the air cannon thing like even at that point like Dozu is like that's a really scary fucking jutsu like I still felt that and that really really hurt even though it was like the blow was cushioned, you know? So, I don't know, man. I, I think the Lotus could, is definitely a win con and would fuck up Jerobo. But, again, that's just me. You know, I, I get the logic and what he's arguing for. But, and then, again, in, in correlation with the whole Kim Maru scaling, all that, whatever, I just think that's way above Jerobo. And so I wouldn't see why Lee wouldn't have the AP to beat him, you know? But, again, that's just me. Chakra that he absorbed. Uh, the chapter statement for Kitomaro against Neji also describes Kitomaro as the strongest enemy. Neji also states this, which would put him above the likes of Lee and the QB Naruto that Neji had fought in the Chunin exams. I also want to add too that the Neji that had been fighting Kitomaro not only had been training from the Chunin exams, but is implied to have been training after the fact. Uh, the anime blatantly supports this as he displays the 128 palms, which if you're familiar with like the whole Lee versus Neji debate, Neji's more comparable to like gated Lee, specifically the third to fourth gate, as that whole like combo barrage was what was necessary, like the high speed Taijutsu to take down Neji. Why is this relevant? Well, we this is relevant due to how Kido Maro is extremely threatening to Neji with the speed of his web attacks. There are mi some minor encounters in the air where the whole group is present with Neji versus Kido Maro that aren't really worth discussing as there's, as there's a bit to them. However, we do see that in a strict 1v1 encounter, Kido Maro is actually able to overwhelm and catch Neji even with Neji seeing the buildup of Chakra and Kido Maro's attack and knowing an attack is coming. Lee has no way to break out of these webs. Kido Maro's like chakra webs that still have like chakra circulating through them. That only Neji with like his gentle fist and ability to like. Yeah, man, yeah, we could definitely do some grounding today. Shoot chakra out. So I will say this uh, with the whole uh, Neji thing and whatnot. Like, yeah, there's, there is tons of evidence to kind of correspond and go to the whole direction that, you know, uh, you know, Neji is at least scaling to Gates levels of Lee and whatnot. And it makes sense and so on and so forth. Um, you know, so you have all that into, uh, into correlation. Now, what I will say is when it comes to Neji and the spider guy, the spider dude was like his jutsu activization, like shooting speed was like in a similar, uh, ballpark with, with Neji or whatever, you know, like, and they were like kind of going back and forth, whatever, blah, blah, you name it. Um, and that's basically what you're dealing with, you know? Um, but like literally, uh, what's it called? But once like Neji gets like more serious and he gets up close and whatnot, he literally just shits on him, bro. Like, the speed blitz and whatever, and then he has to even concede close combat because he just can't fuck with Neji in close combat, you know? So, there is that, too. Um, now, for Lee, obviously, if it's, like, weightless Lee or whatever, you know, if we're if we're talking about, like, just, like, the Lee right after the hospital, which is what TG's doing, Lee actually might be cooked. And, and the reason why is because, you know, the web jutsu speed. You know what I mean? Like, that's, in a sense, like, on Neji's level. Unless you think Neji wasn't going fully all out at that moment and he's just, just keeping up with the webs, right? You know, you name it. And then he, he demonstrates his true speed when he starts fucking him up in close range, you know? Um, so it really just boils down, like, on that concept. You know, you could either uh, you could either have, uh, you know, 
basically to where Lee would have to use above, you know, above first gate and whatnot in order to deal with the webs. Or, you know, if you talk about the whole Kim Mars scaling, all that stuff, whatever, while, how he's performing and, you know, even like weightless and then, you know, with, um, and then with the drunken and then with the first gate and you do all that stuff, you know, then at that point it's like, Hey, you know what I mean? So he should, he should be able to uh, absolutely slam and whatnot. So overall, if Lee does the first gate, um, I do think, uh, the Spider-Man guy's fucked. I, I think he just, he just straight up dies, you know? Uh, you can make an argument, maybe he could do, like, that armor thing in time as well, but, you know, what I will say is, uh, if Gar didn't have any time, or if anyone else never has any time to do anything, I don't see why he'd have enough time to do anything. You get what I'm saying? You know what I mean? I just don't see it. Um, so that should definitely still be a win con. Because, again, like, Kim Mar had to use curse mark in order to deal with that level of speed. He even says impressive speed. Um, as for the, the weightless lead, that's, that's interesting to think about. Um, like, it basically just boils down to, like, how far you gauge uh, Kim Maru. You know what I mean? Um, and that's the question, you know what I mean? So, at the end of the day, you know, when it comes to all that, it's it's either Lee just gets speed blitzed by the webs, you know what I mean? Because he doesn't have gentle fist or anything to deal with it. Um, or Lee can, can be able to dodge it, but eventually he might even get hit or whatever. So it's basically things like that is where I'm getting at. You know what I mean? So, um, that's just kind of for, I'll let you guys kind of think and, and contemplate on that or whatever. Um, again, like if you think base Kimaru is just way over, um, you know, um, the Spider-Man guy and, and whatnot. And in correlation to Lee, then obviously Lee still slams and wins, right? But, you know, another thing you could also think as to comprehend as well is Kim Maru is probably definitely way over, you know, Taiju 2 in combat and all that. But when it comes to the Spider-Man guy shooting his webs, at that point, that might actually be able to give uh, sick Kim Maru some trouble. But then Kim Maru would just go like CM1 or CM2, and that's why he would kill him every fucking time, right? You get what I'm saying? So that's kind of what you're dealing with, you know, at the end of the day. Um, but it, it is interesting to think about, you know, so if, if I personally had to, to say what would, what would happen if, uh, if Lee had to try to deal with the webs, I'd say Lee probably gets subdued by the webs. Um, cause again, Neji does scale to gates level of power and stuff, you know? So Lee would need at least first gate and above to, to deal with the webs and the speed blitz, you know? Um, but that, that's just me, you know? So out from all of his body to like break the webs it, it's just not happening lee actually has no answer for this which presents such issues if he's like able to get this kind of off on an opponent that superior or more comparable to like a heightened lee in a weaker state i might add there is even the question that if lee gets close enough to actually damage kitomaru there's kitomaru's armor of sticky gold now which is more so noted to uh be like better at negating ninjutsu uh the data book notes that it's able to negate many like sport of ninjutsu similar to like neji's gentle fist however it does have to have some defensive property for kitomaru to be using it like a weapon and like throwing it at neji and like the rest of the sasuke retrieval squad kitomaru being a range fighter is very problematic for lee in this situation um for lee to really win you'd have to argue kitomaru's character of playing games allows lee enough time to actually initiate the gates but the minute lee is actually caught in the webbing the fight is more than likely finished as kitomaru generally attacks in tandem with his chakra webbing and use of sticky gold weapons kitomaru summoning a giant spider and subsequent reign of spiders more than likely doesn't make an appearance as that strategy only came about due to kitomaru being pinpointed by neji along with also wanting to stop rotation as neji was just blocking his attacks with rotation or breaking free of webbing by emitting chakra lee also has no way to pinpoint kitomaru's location this fight just doesn't get to version 2 kitomaru it's sad to say unless you argue that like lee just straight up blitzes him off rip and then just like which honestly i don't even think he's fast enough to do at this point just since kitomaru is also like neji's never moving too fast for kitomaru to not react even when he's midair and neji's like about to come from behind he sees like kiba smirk and just like loosens the webs and neji just misses so it's like you have to really think about if neji is that much more comparable to like a higher stage of lee and like Kido Maros has no real issues with Neji unless Neji's like point blank close to him. There's no real chance for Lee. Even the front Lotus doesn't even guarantee anything. I think this fight leans toward Kido Maro heavily, especially since Neji only got close after getting caught in the chakra webbing. So imagine Lee, who should be slower than that same Neji, at least in his base form. It's just not too questionable. So whereas Jerobo might be somewhat contentious, Kido Maro's a lot more objective to say, like, 
Lee wouldn't even really get the opportunity to just get the fifth gate off. You could also maybe make a case that he potentially gate amps after being caught in the webbing. And Kitomaro, in like Kitomaro flat fashion of like playing games, might let him. But again, even if he can't locate Kitomaro, what's he really going to do? And even movements in the air rip Lee's muscle fibers. So it's just going to be extremely difficult to argue that he actually does find Kitomaro and goes through all of these hoops. Yeah, ter they... terrain's definitely important. Definitely important. Um, but at, at the end of the day, I don't think Lee could be able to use any any further than gate one because he just says it verbatim. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if he does anything more, it, it would kill him. You know what I mean? It's the state of verbatim. So, like, him being able to use all the other gates, it just wouldn't be enough. Um, and that's me personally. But, yeah. And so, terrain is important, too. But now, again, if this is full power Lee and he has the ability to use all the gates, he's absolutely slamming. I just, I don't see any way whatsoever for the Spider-Man guy to fucking pull it off. That, that That's just me personally, though, you know? Um, regardless of terrain or whatever, before the guy can even have a chance to fucking run away, he's just gonna bam, channel it, go into the gates, and kill him, you know? Gee, who was... He was like, he had a tough fight against Kitomaro, like he was kind of getting countered, but he was also the perfect opponent for him. Still took a 10 out of 10 difficulty fight. So it's just, it's really hard to imagine Lee like doing well in this situation. Next up, we have Tuyuya. Uh, Tuyuya is probably the easiest fight Lee has out of all of the sound for. Essentially, Tuyuya is just fights ranged with the doki those are like the giant summons that she controls via her flute genjutsu and curse mark stage one i might add and unlike before where like kido maro is like pressing this high skill like Hugi user with all his perception capabilities shikamaru is just able to consistently dodge and outmaneuver out of the way of these doki which really just paints a picture that lee would also more than likely be able to do the same this also depends if you think shikamaru is faster than base lee i don't think so i don't really think there's any evidence to support that it's not even as if shikamaru has any scaling or any feats to necessarily paint him above base lee as well so i think lee would be performing well and like maneuvering away from the doki and once he actually gets in close to tuyuya this is one of those situations where activating the front lotus or just like beating her down with taijutsu is very effective and very likely in all situations. You might even see a situation where Lee just tries to box with the Doki themselves and just starts beating them up. So there's a lot he can do here. So it, there's obviously going to be some issues there. So out of all these scenarios, like there's always the chance that like, oh, how's Lee going to perform off rip? I think this is the strongest one where you can make a legitimate case. He literally just kicks her in the air and like pro uh, front Lotus is hurt. Drunk Lee would also be disastrous because it would be impossible for Tuya to predict his movements and like maneuver the Doki with her flute into like a position where the questionably looking like white semi substance chakra eating worm things that come out the doki's mouth for lee to get nerfed more and more throughout the fight as it goes on so it's kind of an interesting one honestly it really just kind of paints the idea that lee has to perform this perfectly early fight otherwise too you can get a lot of momentum off on him lee could also just break down the trees in the forest kind of similar to what he does in the forest of death where he just grabs a tree root and rips it off the ground so that would also disrupt the doki's movement so lee definitely has a lot of options in this situation there's also the question of tia's flute genjutsu which lee really doesn't have a counter for unless you could say maybe that while he's in the genjutsu he initiates the gates which would do a bit of self-harm to him which would break him out because shikamaru breaks his own finger to break out of it so there's definitely some possibility there like what if lee goes into the fourth to fifth gate right and he's like darting around everywhere like too fast for her to perceive and she uses the blue genjutsu like him ripping his muscle fibers due to like the self-inflicting pain might unironically just make it so he wouldn't be caught in the genjutsu like this is super hyper He's ab it's ab absolutely true. First gate and above. What's it called? What what he would he wouldn't be able to be put in a genjutsu because he'd be in pain the whole time. So yeah, no, I absolutely do agree. That is the only way he could deal with the genjutsu. Um, he would just have to activate the, the the gates basically, and then you know he's in pain, whatever, and then he gets out. Um, but yeah, like the, the only way she has any win come whatsoever is genjutsu and then killing him. But there's a fair argument where he could just do gates, and then there you go, he gets out because of the pain. So yeah. <laughs> Hyper specific. I wouldn't make the case that him powering up into the gates would just break him out. But I do think like him ripping his muscle fibers does warn enough question. Otherwise, though, I do think the Genjutsu would be pretty effective against him. Unless you say like Lee bites his lip like Kuranai does against Itachi to break out of that Genjutsu. I will say, though, you could also make a case that... And this is like one of, a lot of the games portray. And this is actually probably how Tuya fights. And probably what she would have done had Shikamaru not just taken control of her Doki. In that she would more than likely use her Flute Genjutsu 
in conjunction with the jo the doki and like the chakra of physical energy eating worms so that like once you're paralyzed you can't really dodge so if she does see that lee's like bullying them or just like preoccupied she always can go into version state two and just initiate the genjutsu which at that point is just going to be gg for lee there's not really too much you can really argue that he gets out of that aside from maybe some of the stuff i brought up with like the pain so i wouldn't say it's like object fact but considering the fact that Chiyoya only really went into like the fluke genjutsu once shikamaru took a hold of her doki via shadow possession i can't necessarily see the fight getting to that point the fact that her flute is her only weapon too also just aids this like yeah if it's in character lee more than likely definitely has it more than likely um you know what i mean and that's kind of what you work, work with now if it's bloodlusted and it both like and you know it goes to like lee going to the gates you know and then to um to Taiya doing the flute uh in cm2 transformation I'm gonna be honest with you, the first gate activization is really fucking quick. So I, I think he even beats her to the punch, even if they're bloodlusted, you know what I mean? So she immediately tries to transform to CM2 and then go play her flute. I think her having to transform, move the flute to her lips, and play a song is gonna be slower than Lee just brain activization, gate one, bam, speed blitz, right? You know, so yeah, bloodlusted, still Lee, and then fucking what's it called? And even if it wasn't, like... Let's say Lee, and obviously if we grant even all the five gates, it's even more of a slaughter. Even if she gets a Genjutsu, he'll just be in pain and, and she and Lee wins. You know what I mean? The only way the Genjutsu is a win con is if those ghost creatures are out or those uh, big creep the summonings, and then she goes to see him too while controlling them and, and stops his movement and they kill him. I do agree with TG. That would definitely be a win con as well. Um, but again, I just don't even think it gets that far, and I agree with TG. It's... Basically, yeah, Lee, Lee gets that both both areas, but that's just me. It's Lee her only option at this point. So if Lee just does well against the Doki and is like fast enough to just avoid them, he should be fine. So I would say Lee has a pretty good chance, probably lean towards Lee in this situation. But with that being said, depending on how the battle goes, obviously Chia can get her fluke Genjutsu off and just take a W. But even then, I think that's very dependent on when she uses it as opposed to, oh, her just using it and she wins the fight. Next up, we have Sakon and Ukon. And this one is brutal, man. This is such a bad matchup for Lee. So the issue is, is that Sakon and Ukon's arsenal fundamentally makes it that physical blows don't really matter too much since if either one takes damage they can swap out with the other or just blatantly block attacks this is why sasuke's lion's barrage did nothing right sasuke who has arguably harder hitting moves than base lee considering how he was able to fatigue gara obviously a bit debatable but at the very least they should be comparable so Lee's physical blows just aren't going to aid him in this situation in this base i will also add that due to ukon being able to move freely inside sakon's body it essentially makes it that ukon can shoot his feet arms and face out of any part of sakon's body and pretty much like add power to his moves this is why when you see sakon do like that barrage of fist yeah that's extra arms coming out of his arm and for those who want to like wonder how crazy sakon and ukon are they literally stopped a fang over fang like they just grabbed kiba out of it so it's like these guys are pretty insane in what they can do so there's like a position like if lee would even go for like the forward lotus they might just grab him or block it, which would be horrendous for Lee as there would be a ton of backlash. Like, obviously, drunkenly... Nah, I, I disagree. Because if Kim, Mar if Kim Maru is way over, um, way over Psycon, you name it, I think uh, Gate 1 would just blitz a uh, blitz Psycon. Like, he'll get kicked in the air. He'll get kicked. Speed Blitz, you know, set in the air and then immediately wrapped and then bam, he's done. Like, I don't know if Psycon could be able to deal with that. Like, you could make the argument, you know, maybe... By either splitting his body away before, you know, or I don't know, like, you know, with his, like, Taijutsu negation block type thing. But the problem with that move is it's very vague. We don't really have a lot of information. Like, we know it can, like, block and deal um, with certain levels of Taijutsu and things like that. But it, it doesn't deal with everything. Like, when it comes to Kiba doing, like, his full, like, uh, you know, a Fang over Fang transformation thing, they, they can't deal with that at all. Like, they do have limits, you know? So... I don't know, it kind of gets to, like, the discussion where, you know, um, do you have, like, uh, Lee's, you know, Lotus, like, over uh, Kiba's full transformation, Fang over Fang, things like that, you know, but uh, it's it's really interesting to say, you know, so I get both ends, I just think, personally, it's just a speed blitz, and then he just kills him, um, but then again, you could make the argument, like, maybe he could still regenerate, or split his body, things like that, whatever, but when, when Lee wraps the, the person up with the fucking bandages, though, and things like that, like, you know just saying like he could just go down or whatever like unless you think psychon could just like extend a punch through the, the those as well like 
I just think he just gets hit, bam, up, immediately spinning, and just down. Like, I don't think he's going to have any time to even comprehend what's going on. You know, it's it's just that massive of a speed gap, you know. Again, he forced Kim Maru to use partial curse mark transformation to compensate compensate for the speed difference. You know what I mean? It's kind of like Jutsu activation when Sasuke does Susano to the right Gage, you know. So, I, I don't know. Like, first get, I think, would be enough to do it. Obviously, anything above should definitely be enough. Um, that's just me personally, and they're not like because they don't have a vern ability to tie you to in blades and shit. Like we see that with Conqueror, we see that with uh, keep us fang over fang with the max fang over fang, not normal, you know. So that, that's all I'm getting at. But. Would do well in this situation, but again, right, the fact that a lot of his physical blows don't really offer him any momentum and like his only way to like really like hit Sakon or Ukon hard enough is to use like the gates is pretty disastrous for him. There's also the chance too that if he uses the gates on version 2 Sakon and Ukon, they actually might just separate and get back up, honestly. Or if he hits one body, the version that takes the damage could just swap out with the other one, which would be, again, disastrous for Lee. Or they could just decide to split off because they can do it manually. It does seem pretty likely, though, that, like a higher gated Lee would definitely be faster in likes of Sakon and Ukon. They, I will say, though, they are pretty fast themselves. The only reason they actually got tagged by Kiba's uh, Wolf Fang over Fang was because there was drool on the floor that made them kind of slip and be uncoordinated which led to them getting hit so yeah but that's even if the fight gets to that point like drunken league could present some problems but there's nothing to say it would like fundamentally go the route it did with kimimaro and, and the minute kimimaro like took him semi-seriously the fight ended obviously if sakon or ukon merge with lee that personally i don't know man i, I think uh drunken league would slam the fuck at his um at a psychon like you know like, I, I think QB Naruto also beats Saikon as well. But, you know, like, basically what I'm getting at is Lee, he messed up Q, uh, Kimaru in base. Like, he was he was beating his ass. And he had to go to uh, to Curtis Mark to deal with that. I, I think he would just beat the hell out of Saikon, you know, and just that would basically be that, whatever, you know. Um, that's kind of what you're working with, you know. Because the problem is Kimaru is over the sound four, you know. Like, he's just like, you know, when like when he was next to uh, Tayuya. He was there, whatever, you name it, and he just fought out total, like, okay, whatever. There's, there's tons of ways to, to go about it. But if he's over the sound four, you know, then therefore, then, and if Lee corresponds to that, he should just be over as well. You, you know what I'm saying? That's basically all I'm getting at, but, you know, I, I get what TJ's saying. It, it has logic, and it's understandable. I don't think it's anything too crazy, especially if you're doing, like, Devil's Advocate or even to advocate for the sound four. Um, but I will say this. In a general consensus, TG actually did a really good job. Like, it's it's a really good way of analyzing it because he tries to be as objective as possible. And if there ever is any room to subjectiveness, then he'll be, like, at least willing to understand multiple perspectives, whatever you name it. Um, so, you know, he's never dishonest. And that, that I do enjoy about him. Um, but I just think with the feats and statements and everything we do have, Lee should be enough to, to beat him. At least, I would say, first gate. I mean, would you say if, I, if I'm going to sit here and say uh, weightless, you know, maybe, the, you know, maybe uh, Psycon could just deal with the blows, you know, because all his abilities, healing, whatever you name it, right? You know, um, but that, that's that's just me personally. So could be disastrous. An interesting scenario I could see is if one of them tries to merge and Lee actually like starts to initiate the gates and like starts bouncing around and causing his own body pain, like while attacking the other one. In order to get the one that's merged with him to get back out because his muscles are going to be ripping. I don't know. I think that's kind of a cool and interesting scenario. I will say, though, we don't really have, like, good showing, you know, on, like, the durability aspect of what Sakon and Ukon can do. So, I definitely wouldn't put it past, like, 5th Gate Lee to, like, put some damage on them and, like, actually take them down permanently. They also have access to the Rashomon Gates, but there's no way to say that they would actually be able to just take down or react quick enough to 5th Gate Lee to actually be able to summon the gate. And the fact that this is Lee's main win condition with arguably, like, his Drunken Fist to base form not really opting for any, like, advantages here... Just kind of paints Sakon and Ukon as coming out a lot more confidently. Granted, Lee can do work. It's just that their arsenal is pretty good against Taijutsu users. And we've seen how they react to quite literally a variation of Lee's Taijutsu. So with a lot of these matchups, honestly, there is a lot of potential for Lee. But at the end of the day, it does have to be Lee at his absolute peak in the 4th to 5th gate. Which he, I'm, I'm more so doing to be generous. Like he more than likely can't do in his sickened state. 
And even then, it's like an all or nothing move. Because obviously after that point, he's not going to be able to move. And you have to argue that he's actually lasting enough in the fight to actually initiate the gates. Which, at this point in the series, he wouldn't lead with them. Which is why in certain matchups, I feel he doesn't do as well. I think the Kimimaro fight best demonstrates what I'm talking about. He attempts to fight Kimimaro in base. And then he, you know, takes his medicine. And then only when all that fails, he tries to initiate the forward lotus. And then Kimimaro absorbs the impact with his bones. Does this change too much? Well, it actually could have in the sense that Drunken Lee kind of allowed Lee to stall Kimimaro and keep him at bay for a short period of time. After Sasuke emerged from the coffin, Kimimaro didn't really need to do anything except stall everybody else from going after Sasuke. So even then, like, it doesn't really make that much of a difference in the grand scheme of things. So it's kind of weird to say, but Lee really just didn't do too much during this arc. It was more so a question of, in my opinion, do you think the other members could stall as well as he did against Kimimaro? I think it is in some cases, yes. In some cases, no. But let me know what you guys think down below. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe, all that. All right, yeah, it was a good video. It was a good video. Um, so overall, you know, I'll say this. What's it called? If it's full power Lee, he absolutely would definitely slam him. I, I don't give a fuck. I think full power Lee fucking slams all this on four. Um, that's just me personally. I don't think they could. I don't. They just, they just can't deal with it. It's too much speed and power. Um, if it's only, you know, weightlessly or with uh, or with in drunken and also first gate, um, that's where it's it is interesting. Um, you know, what I mean, I do think drunken and first gate does deal with all of them as well. Again, just blatant Kim Maru scaling and things like that. If you have Kim Maru over those people, then there you go. Um, and that's kind of what you're working with. Like the only counter argument you can really make for the Kim Maru thing is like, is if you, um, you know, is that it would take like Kim Maru to go to like CM1 or CM2 in order to, to kill them all, which is why he acts that way, whatever, while he's sick, you know? Um, so meaning like base Kim Maru wouldn't be over them. And if that's the case, I'm assuming that's what uh, TG's like perception and logic would be, is that Kim Maru's like base is in a similar regard to the Sound 4 members. Um, but even then, I just don't think that's the case because when we see base Kim Maru, he's so fucking fast. Like, he's, like, perception and, like, he's just emphasized to be a tier above, like, Shikamaru, base Naruto, and Taiyuya. Like, he's just blatantly emphasized, you know what I mean? So, like, if if base Kim Maru is that much above, you know what I mean? That's base, and Lee has correspondence to that. You see what I'm saying? Like, that's why I just think, you know, I, I really do think Lee just be beating them up with at least Gate 1, Drunken Fist, and especially f of all five gates, you know? For uh, for Weightless Lee, that's completely understandable. You can talk whatever you name, blah, blah, whatever, blah, blah, you know? But either way, even Weightless Lee, mind you, not a full power Lee. This is, like, less sharper, less faster out of the hospital. Even he was able to tag uh, Kim Mar multiple times. And I think, I think that alone is impressive. And if you only take Manga only... He's also shown to be in, in a similar scaling with Kimaru because if he wasn't, Kimaru would just would have killed him right there, like easily. Like basically, what he was gonna do to base Naruto, he would have done the same exact thing to Lee. You know what I mean? Or even to what he does to Shikamaru and Naruto as well. Or even when he threatens Taiyu. You know, so that's kind of what you got. Um, you know, that's all I will say. But that's just me personally. Um, the only, the only sound form member I think would have any chance remotely to beat Lee would be the Spider-Man guy, and that's due to because of his webbing, Jutsu activization speed. Like, that is pretty cracked. If you think that's on the, the max level of Neji speed, then obviously, um, you know, Lee's fucked even with the first gate or whatever. Um, and then there you go. If you think that's wasn't Lee uh, Neji going fully out, and he doesn't go fully out until he's, like, in close quarters when he does, like, the 64 game or whatever, blah, blah, um, then Lee should technically still be fine, you know? Um, and then you have that as well. Um, or at least bare minimum, if he activates the first gate, he should be able to avoid all the webs, kick him, you know, speed blitz, whatever, and then kill him, you know? So the Spider-Man guy one is actually really interesting to think about. Um, you know, but, and that's just if we are applying, like, the handicap lead. Now, if it's full power lead, I think he just slams. But, you know, even with the terrain, I don't even think it gets as far for him to use the terrain and move whatever. I think he just simply, you know, he activates the gates, bam, and kills him, right? You know, so... That's just me. Because it, it doesn't take the gates a million years to, to activate. Like, he could just go right into it, you know? So, um, but yeah, that, that's that's basically all I'll say from there. Overall, very great video. Um, you guys let me know what you think down in the comments down below. Uh, make sure to leave a like. Subscribe for more comments. Subscribe to the channel. Plenty more reactions on the way. Eventually, I am going to do my Lee um, versus the Sound 5 video as well. 
Um, and, and I'm just going to do my homework once more just to refresh and, and look over everything. And then I'll just basically give my thoughts on how I think it would go in character and blood busted. So um, I, I might even have uh, Mr. Ken with me for that video too. But, but yeah, as always, guys, bye out. Peace.